This week, we're going to um, look at uh, analysis of uh, high dimensional vectors, specifically vectors that come from um, weather analysis. Okay, so we are used to uh, work with two or three dimensional vectors, which we can think about as arrows, either in the plane or in 3D space. And we uh, can think about how we add them, how we multiply them by a, by a constant, and so on. But how can we visualize vectors that are in a dimension higher than three? OK, so that is actually harder because uh, we can't really think in four or five or six dimensions. So one good way to do that is to visualize the d-dimensional vector um, as a function from 1 up to d to the real numbers, OK? So basically, vice versa, we can think about functions from 1 to, uh, let's say, 365, from 1 to 365 to the reals as uh, vectors. And uh, that is actually quite a useful thing to do. So we'll talk about it here. OK, so the vector operations are all well defined. And we don't need the visualization for those. But um, the visualization does definitely help us get some intuition about what is going on, specifically when we do PCA. So this uh, time, we're just going to talk about approximating functions that have nothing to do with weather, just arbitrary functions using some kind of ortho orthonormal basis. So let's say that our range, we define our range to be numbers from 0 to 2 pi, and we choose 365 uh, steps simply to, uh, because we want to be similar to uh, what we'll do next. Uh, with, the, with the 365 days of a year. And the functions that we're going to choose are uh, listed here. Uh, basically, they are cosines and sines of x. And x is multiplied by some integer. And um, when it's multiplied by 0, it's simply the constant. And then these are sine of x, cosine of x, sine of 2x, cosine of 2x, and so on. So this is a well-known set of functions. It's called the Fourier basis. And uh, we're going to use it here. So here is how these functions look. Um, what we see that the constant function is, is here. OK, some, it's some constant. Um, and then, the, uh, then we have the sinusoid, which is this orange one. And then we have the uh, cosine, which is the green one, and um, so on. OK, so these are all um, functions that are sines and cosines. And what is interesting is that um, they are all orthogonal to each other. And with the proper scaling, they are all have norm 1. OK, so we want to check that. And so we basically take the inner product, the dot product between every vector and every other vector. And so we create a 9 by 9 matrix. And what we see is that, indeed, this 9 by 9 matrix has ones on the diagonal, corresponding to the vectors being uh, unit, um, unit length, and um, zeros off the diagonal, meaning that the vectors are orthogonal to each other. So. Um, for our analysis, and uh, also in this case for our uh, Python code, it is convenient to think about these vectors as um, rows in a, in a matrix. So we can use the vstack command to do that. And now we have a matrix that is 365 times 9. OK, so now we want to uh, see how we can approximate an arbitrary function. So um, let's take this function, f is equal to x to the minus 4 absolute value. You can use any other function. That's where you can play with the notebook and try to see what happens then. OK, so here is that function, and here is how it looks. OK, so it's a piecewise linear function that has the minimum of 0 at 4 
and grows at 45 degrees in both directions. Definitely doesn't look very much like a sinusoid. Okay, so we're going to look at the approximation of this function using more and more of the basis functions. So we're going to start just with a constant, then the constant plus sine, the constant plus sine plus cosine, and so on. And every time we're going to look at how much is the error. So basically, what's the square distance between the approximation gi and the function f? So let's plot these approximations. And here, here they are. Okay, so what you see is that the first approximation is just this orange line. Okay, so it's the constant times some, some number. And then you have the green line, which is the constant plus a sinusoid. And then you have the um, red line, which is the, cosine, the sine plus sum of the cosine uh, plus the constant. Okay, and so on. So we're basically increasing the number of elements that we're adding. And this is a little bit much to see here, so I wrote this little widget to help you visualize it. So here's the same graph, and um, what we have here is basically the approximation of the function um, and that we can play with. We can change um, from, we can, we can change it using the, these uh, sliders. So right now, we have the approximation that is zero everywhere, so it's basically the zero function, and it's clearly very far from the, um, from the, uh, from our target function, x minus four absolute value. So let's see what happens if we increase this coefficient. We see that we move the, we move the uh, constant to the middle of the function, more or less. Then when we add the second one, we add a sinusoid, and the sinusoid helps us get closer to the function in, in some of the regions. It doesn't help us at all here, right? Because it's zero and it stays equidistant. But now if we add the cosine, that helps us also there, okay? So what you see here is as you go and you add more and more components, you get closer and closer to the um, original, uh, to the target function. And basically you can say, okay, the, these coefficients that I wrote that are down here uh, are a representation for the approximation of the function. Okay, so that's a nice thing uh, in and of itself. But now let's see a, a particular use of that, which is recovering from noise. So, so how, suppose I have a function that is really a sum of two sinusoids, so two times the vector one minus four times the vector five, but then I add to it noise, okay? So this is uh, random normal noise, so this is just what's called white noise. We add that, and what we get is something like this. So what we get is the orange line. Underlying it, the function that, we, that was really um, not without noise is the blue line. So the question is, can we recover that? Now, if this function is really uh, based on uh, just the sinusoid and on a few of them, then we can do a very good job of that. And that's what we have here, okay? So um, let's see. What we have here basically is that if I remove these, okay. So now we have essentially the function zero, okay? So this is, this is, um, this is, the, the approximation is zero, but now if we just look at the coefficients that corresponded to what was really in the original function, we see that that adds a little bit, and now if we add uh, this one, then we essentially get the, a, perfect, um, a perfect reconstruction, almost perfect reconstruction. So, of course, we can ask what is, what is happening if we change the others, um, and they will change the function a little bit, but they are not going to change it a lot. So what this means is the, the essence of the function is captured by uh, the coefficients C1 and C5, and the rest of them are much uh, less important 
and so uh, the numbers in front of them are much smaller. Okay, so that basically lets us uh, detect inside the noise what is really what we call the signal. Okay, so to summarize, functions can be thought of as vectors, and vectors can be thought of as functions. Okay, so you can go back and forth. Uh, the Fourier basis is a set of orthonormal functions made out of sines and cosines. And orthonormal functions can be used to remove uh, noise that it is added to um, that is added to uh, a function that is uh, has a small representation in the basis we're using. See you next time.